Why, hello everyone! Welcome back to another episode of Resonant Rise with me, Hexmore. Now, not quite sure what we're actually doing for this episode, but I still haven't connected up that uh, lightning rod generator yet because of the need for the cryo stabilized uh, flux duct. So, to that end, I need to sort of get them onto an auto craft. So, I figured I should really show you how I do something like that. So, let's clear out all of this as things, inputs and outputs. So we want the top to be input, so there. We want an uh, exporter. We want to make this the cryothium. And we want a crafting upgrade in there, so if the system's out, it'll craft more of it to put it in here. And it's already started filling. Brilliant. <coughs> Just get some power from behind here. Did bring some of the power cable, didn't I? I did. Good. There we go, now it's got some power. So now it's melting things down. So, next up, we want to set an output. So, we want to output on the left. So we want that to be orange. And we want to put a fluid transposer in. Let's get rid of all of its outputs. Alright, so we want the right hand side to be input, which is blue, I guess. Yep, there we go, blue. And we want to put how will we do this? We want an input and a No, we just want a crafting a crafting thing. I'm figuring it out as I go. We want a craft because a crafting thing can input and output, I think. No, they can just input. Ugh. All right. So you meant to face the other way. That's better. So well, that's all good. I have to chuck the recipe in there, which I haven't made yet. Give it some power. So that way, this will always have cryothium sitting in it, and I just need to send the unfilled flux duct whenever I'm ready for it. And I need to be able to pull the flux duct out, so I want an importer. And I want... I suppose that's my output. Yep, so I want that to be my output on the left hand side goes back into the grid. And then I can do the exact same thing for the redstone mod. And then voila, we have fully automated cryothium. Um, like stuck crafting. So that will work brilliantly for us. It means that I can connect up that lightning rod generator and I might just sit up there on the surface and try and get a shot of the actual lightning rod generator working. There hasn't been a thunderstorm yet but hopefully there will be one soon and I'll try and figure out what we're actually going to accomplish for this episode so I'll be right back. Okay, so we're back. 
So one empty flux duct, one cryo filled flux duct. There's our pattern. Now if I go around and put this in the machine, should be able to test this all out. And it will all work brilliantly. I hope. The one thing I did forget before was we had to set the top to input as well because we're inputting not just the fluids but we're inputting the solid or flux duct as well. Set up the redstone one. So let's just cross our fingers, go test this out and we'll see how it works really. So we want flux duct just to make sure that everything is working we will get rid of what we've got in the system so we're completely empty of flux duct none of the basic ones we want the cryo flux duct hmm right on the other course well, that's unfortunate i'll be right back Alright, attempt number two. I got some um, nether quartz. Not a lot of it, but enough for us to prove the concept. So the full thing says we've got everything. Start. So let's just go look at what it's doing. Waiting for items, waiting for items, waiting for items. Processing, oops, crafting fused quartz, so it must be smelting things. It's doing stuff. Let's go see if we can see it. Oh, yep, so we have some of the unfilled one. We've managed to get up two filled. Flux duct two. Oh, we missed it all. It actually happens quite quickly once it gets going. So we have a one prior stabilized flux duct. Excellent. And the one that I had to manually make so that I could hello. So that I could set the processing pattern. So we've got two more. Brilliant. So let's just go, I don't know, twenty of that. No. Whoa, not even close. But we're gonna go five of that. Uh, alright. Well, I'm going to have to go on a nether quartz hunt and get lots and lots and lots of nether quartz. And while I'm doing that, it gives me plenty of opportunity to think about what we really want to accomplish now. Okay, still not sure what we're actually doing yet. This is turning into a terrible episode for actual progress. But while trying to tidy up now that we've got heaps of this cryostabilized block duct, trying to tidy up all of the cabling system under the ground, I've run into a bit of a problem that I'm now trying to fix. We had a crafting recipe, because we get most of our gold, because I don't know why we're so short, but we are, from the zombie pigment spawner. Uh, most of it comes in nuggets. So we've got a recipe to craft nuggets into ingots but we also have a recipe to craft ingots into nuggets that's what's been causing the loop dependency um, fault on our refined storage thing it doesn't like paradoxes things going back and forth so if I go capacitor and I go craft need more than one it's fine so long as it's Hmm. It's fine so long as it's got like enough of one or the other, but then when it has to, then when it's like short of nuggets and all, it sort of has a massive herbiderp, and I can't get it to herbiderp at the moment. Because it's just wanting to craft it up, but we have lots of... Uh, actually, no, it's not herbiderping because I've taken the thing out. I'm very confused at why it's 
having a massive tantrum. So if I put that gold ingot one back in, it turns it into ingots and go capacitor. Yep, so there's our fault. But if I take that out, it just doesn't have doesn't know how to make gold ingots, it just knows that it's short. So what I'm doing at the moment, because we need nuggets as well, but we're predominantly getting nuggets, um, I'm going to go for this, so emit a redstone signal when above the amount. We want to keep, we want to keep at least a hundred nuggets. And we want this exporter to export nuggets when we've got over a hundred nuggets. And then this will craft gold ingots. And then we want to re-import them back into the grid. So configure, that's push and pull. I don't think we need to worry about that because this is a into IO, we'll just accept it. We don't need to configure sides. So that will do it. When we've got over a hundred nuggets, we will start making some ingots. Yeah. So that works. That fixes our circular loop problem. I can wipe that thing. It'll get used again. And now if I go capacitor and what did I want? I wanted another five of these. I'm short, but there's just nothing I can do about it. So, I need more gold. So, I'm just going to leave that zombie people thing going. And I've been working on the power. So, I've tidied it all up. We don't have so many inputs and outputs all over it now. This is just input. It connects to the lightning rod generator. Um, it goes under the floor and connects up to where our thermionic fabricators are and it also goes down and connects up to our water wheels. I've, and this is our old capacitors from our capacitor bank that you've seen on the wall before, basic capacitors. I've turned them into like buffers and I've been replacing the main one with regular capacitors and that's the leftovers as well feeds out of the main capacitor bank into this, a lever on it so that we can turn it on to output when we want, feeds back into our input side, and that's our only output. So we've got one input, one output of our capacitor bank, and it all is brilliant. I've just been running out of power, and I've been liking this idea of I can just come in here, flick a switch, and bang, that starts pumping out 20,000, back into the other capacitor bank, turn it off, and it will start, and it'll just recharge itself off of the main one, when the main one's capable of it. It's a very similar thing as what I've done with backup for the um, refined storage too. That way, no more power problems, hopefully. Could really just use a lightning strike though, but in the entire time that I've been doing this, no rain. No rain whatsoever. But since I've shown you that, I'll take a cut and I think I will look at the weather manipulator from Draconic Evolution and we'll see if we can make it rain. Alrighty, well, I looked at the celestial manipulator. We're never going to be able to make that at the moment just requires too much, you need the dragon egg, I know nothing about getting another dragon egg and I'm not willing to give it up until I know how to get another dragon egg. So, there is the weather manipulator with Ender IO. we're going to give that a try. The pulsating crystals we've done before, vibrant crystals, an ender crystal, all pretty stock standard, gives us a weather crystal. And I'm really hoping, it does say that it requires a catalyst, I'm really hoping it's not the weather crystal because they're a pain in the butt to make. Hmm. I was sure 
I had told that to autocraft some energy gallo. Apparently I didn't. Um, Signalium? Nope. Houston, I'm very confused. Must be already done. Huh, oh well. Doesn't matter, as long as it works. So, let's just plonk him down. So... Okay, I was really hoping for a little bit more detail on how this thing worked. Let's just go to here where we can get some power for it. It says it requires lots of power. 100,000. Max 20. Half per tick, I wouldn't call that lots of power. Tank? Some sort of... Hmm... Oh. No idea, but that looks like a rocket, so this is going to have to go on the roof. So, I'm going to sort of look through Ender.io, try and figure out what this thing uses. I'll take it up to the roof. We already have a... That's an input power cable. Uh, an output power cable on the roof. Hmm. Alright, well, I'm going to have to get an output power cable to the roof. And then I will bring this right back once I've figured out how this thing actually works. Alright, well, I'm still suffering the gold shortage. So, I wasn't able to actually bring it all up as the flux duct, but that'll do for now. That gets us going. I also had to give up. I could not figure out what this catalyst was I had to give up and Google it. According to Google, all I need to do is somehow put a bucket of lava in it. Hmm, Google said the bucket of lava was the catalyst. For a thunderstorm, a uh, cake for clear weather and a bucket of water for rainy weather. Well, Google, you are out of date or I'm doing something wrong. So I'll be back. Okay, we're back. Now, for some reason, JI doesn't tell you how to make fireworks. Three gunpowder and a paper, or you can use one gunpowder, and it changes apparently according to Google how much distance and all it goes. Now, I don't know how high we need to go, so I'm just going to go with that so that we've got the maximum flight. Because apparently, this is how this thing works. It's rather complicated. I've created a reservoir for an unlimited supply of water. They're not hard to make, they're from Ender.io. Just some um, hardened glass and a cauldron. Fill it with two buckets of water. Get my uh, Yetta wrench and right click on it and it'll auto pump water out. It's pumping it into there. Clay and I've run out of ice but I had some ice in there before which I got from snowballs and then chucking it um, in a compressor. Um, so that comes out of there as cloud seed, then go through here, um, and you've got more clay, and how rude, I was in the middle of explaining something, go away, go away, go away you headless freak, there we go, oh seriously, everyone just wants to interrupt my video. How rude of them. Well, we'll skip it to daytime. I really would have liked that celestial manipulator. That way I could have controlled 
day as well as weather, I do believe. The next time, Cezatrix or uh, Inco log on and it's like perpetual day with perpetual thunderstorms and all though. <laughs> they may not have been too impressed. But more clay will then get you the concentrated cloud seed. Now, if I put a rocket in there, press the button, and I don't know how much of this stuff it takes, or how long it takes. We should now have a thunderstorm. have a thunderstorm. But there was a bit of lightning. It's apparently power in this thing now. Do you not see any, like... Well, that's massively disappointing. I was expecting some sort of flash of lightning in, to actually hit it. Well, I'm so disappointed. But there's 16 million RF. Well, we filled it. A battery bank should be full now for a very long time to come. Seriously, go away. Out of my base. This is a mob free zone. Seriously, I'm going to die. Nope, not quite. This is very, very confusing. I'm losing power. So I've turned multiple things on in the hope of... Maybe I've not set this thing up right. Because that says that it's got power in it. 16 million. And I have no power. Hmm. Okay. Well. We got this thing going. We can now con can control the weather. But apparently there's a problem with the lightning rod generator. So I'm going to have to figure out what's wrong with the lightning rod generator. And I will see you next time. Hope you did enjoy this not very productive episode in all honesty. And I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.